There's one. Big one. Big one. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. There we go, Al. That's a big boy there. <laughs> oh, look I at can it. see that. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's a big, big walleye. walleye. I bet these I guys would like to be dead. And... Ooh. Well, Shuttering like up that. really big walleyes. Have you seen that happen before? I was gonna say when I set the hook on him, I thought that was a really an interesting strike. It's a beautiful fish though. Look at that. Huh. There's some guys would like that fish tomorrow. I oh I get I guarantee you. Yeah, there's a tournament here tomorrow. And the bite has been really quite slow. I think they'd be very impressed to catch that little beast tomorrow, tomorrow morning about <laughs> on the first spot. Why do fish move shallow? Well, it could be for many reasons. Food, weather, nature, habitat, or any combination of these factors. In rivers, rising water will have a tendency to push fish shallow. That would be weather related. In midsummer on lakes, bass can get right into the shallow slop chasing bait. That would be more forage and cover related. In the fall on a reservoir, bass will often get on the flats for one final feeding binge before winter. That would be nature related. Well, in spring like this, it's primarily nature. These northern bass have a natural instinct to stage near where they'll be spawning. It just so happens that the water temperature in these locations are generally warmer than the rest of the water column and there happens to be forage present in these locations and many times they're gravitating to any form of cover in these shallow zones. So is it food, weather, nature, or habitat specifically? We like to think about it as stackable positive elements. The more you stack up, the better your odds are on catching fish. Ooh, that felt so good. He just loaded up on that thing. Yeah, they really crunch it on it, don't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, oh man. It felt so good. Look at that. It's been a long winter, boy. I've been waiting a long, long time. I've been waiting for you. I've been dreaming about you. Do, do you ever dream about fish? Mm -hmm. I've been dreaming about this bass for about a month. I knew ice out wasn't too far, too far away. Oh, you just made my day, baby. You know, we got out here. And I was really kind of surprised. There's a lot of muddy water. And uh, a, a lot of baits like swim jigs and, and jerk baits and, and, and at the, you know, slow moving baits ain't gonna work. So we, we, we went to something that'll always work when you're in dark water. I got a Terminator spinner bait on one rod and I gotta show you this thing that, uh, you needed something that makes noise. So it's a, a spinner bait and this is a new bait from Terminator. And uh, it's called a, sh a shutter bait, Terminator shutter bait. And uh, you know, it's, it's a vibrating jig, except look at the front of this thing. It's different than any of the other ones. It's got a real different feel. And I'll tell you what, you get a lot of shake, rattle, and roll with this baby. In this dark, muddy water, the bass know that it's there. So we're bouncing back and forth. We're catching fish on both, uh, uh, on both baits. You need baits that you know, moving a lot of water, making a lot of noise and uh, it's coming together. Now when we're talking about trailers for spinner baits or bladed jigs, there are really only four shapes we use. One is the boot tail, like the big bite cane thumper or suicide shad. Next would be a crawfish shape, like the swimming craw. Third would be a big bite four inch fat grub. And finally is a minnow profile. The five inch jerk minnow is a good example of the type of shape. Add a dab of super glue to the nose of the plastic and you'll get more life out of the bait. All of these trailers add bulk and extra action to the shutter bait. You need to try all four because one will often outproduce the others. Let the fish tell you what they want. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's a good one. That's a big one there. That's a big one. That's a big, big, that's a big boy, Al, there. Oh, you know, that's one thing about this technique. It's like so many different things in bass fishing that uh, they become really presentation specific, meaning the rod, reel, and line you fish with. And with this uh, style of bait, a lot of guys really prefer a very, very soft action rod. This is a Legend Glass 7'2 medium action rod. 
And what it's about is actually, it's a really uh, forgiving uh, presentation. And you're, that bait's vibrating and moving along. And it's moving relatively quickly. And uh, you want the fish to be able to almost overtake it like a, a, cr a lot like a crankbait. That's a big boy. Yeah, look at that one. They're a beautiful bass. But it's a really specific uh, rod, reel, and line that you want to fish these baits with. No question about that. Boy, that's a tank. Look at that thing, Al. Beautiful fish. I'll get her back in the water. But the thing is, what I got is a 14-pound suffix fluorocarbon, 7-2 legend glass rods, real soft, and then a uh, 6.3 to 1 uh, Daiwa reel. And what you're doing is you're reeling along and it's vibrating intermittently, put a little uh, twitch into the bait. When the fish hit it, it's sort of weird because you'll just keep on reeling and all of a sudden the rod loads up and you got them. You don't want the bait moving along if you move it too fast. A lot of times what you'll do is uh, pull the bait away from the fish. What you want to do is flip the bait out. I'll let it sink down. Right now we're in three or four foot of water. And then you start reeling it, but you'll notice I'll put sort of a bend a slight bend in the tip of the rod. And you do this a lot for like when you're crankbait fishing, but you can see, feel that vibration intermittently. You're putting a little change of cadence of the uh, shutter bait as it's moving along. But when the fish hit it, you just sort of load up and you just keep on reeling and then you just reel into them. You don't do like a, a snap set that you would use for like throwing a worm or a jig. You know, there's a variety of different baits that work uh, really well at this time of the year. It's a lot of them what we term as, uh, you know, moderate to slow moving uh, chase baits, meaning uh, a spinner bait, a crank bait. Rattle baits are really good at this time of the year. And another bait that's become really dominant are these blade jigs like the shutter, shutter bait. It's a lot of vibration, can cover a, lot, a tremendous amount of water, but in the last number of years, it's interesting to me on how a lure like this has become such a dominant player in tournament bass fishing. I mean, big time. A lot of tournaments are won on this particular bait. And it's not only in spring, it's year round. This bait really catches a lot of fish. 